Hello everybody, this is Tony Brody with Keller Williams. I hope you're having a great day. I'd like to walk you through kind of a model I've had um, used for a while. I'm gonna add some technology on how to have a conversation with talent, with market share, um, consult with your own people, but really to have a business consultation about money, the real estate industry, um, what their perspective is, where does the broker operate, what would excite them. And as, uh, and as we're going through a shift in the market, technology competitive, um, I hope this you find this effective. And typically what I do is when I have a candidate is basically I'll ask, you know, there's basically four different ways to earn wealth in the world or income, right? This is from Robert Kiyosaki, Cashflow Quadrant. By the way, this is one of Gary's top books um, before the ones he even wrote that he recommended uh, in addition, obviously, all his national bestsellers. But in, in the book, it talks about the four different ways to earn is one is, is the E quadrant, which is employee. Uh, S is the self-employed down at the bottom left. The top right is business owner. And the bottom right is investor. And what studies show every single year, and it's, it's amazing that these stats typically stay the same, is really the reality is 95% of the world operates as an employee or self-employed individual. I think it's like 88% right out of college come start right here, right? Just to the employee. And then, and then over here, that means 5% is a business owner or an investor. Um, the reality is it's not even the Pareto principle, which is, which is fascinating. The 95% who live their life over here as an employee or self-employed actually only earn 5% of all the wealth or the income in the world. Over here, that means the 5% who operate as a business owner or investor actually earn 95% of all the income or the wealth in the world. So the question we got to ask as you have a consultation is where does their broker currently operate out of? Where is their business and their life and what would excite them? And, and the typically way I do it is I kind of I, get some agreement as we go through it is talk about the history of, of real estate. And if we think of the employee quadrant, um, I think of this as kind of you have an employee employer relationship. And what that means is you got a very broker focused brands, meaning you got the broker up top and then typically what that means is the agent at the bottom and you, they want you to believe that your success as an independent contractor in real estate is dependent on who? On their brand, right? So when you have that type of mo model, typically three things happen. One is their control of your money, your commissions, right? As you sell more real estate, you have to pay more taxes to the brokers the way I look at it. They're also in control of your listings and they're also in control of your leads in your business, right? So this has been kind of the, the model that dominated the industry from really the 1920s um, to I would say probably the mid to the early 1980s. And, and what happens is, so think about some companies that operate out of this, right? All of Rheology, we know that, you know, especially CB, especially back in the 20s, ERA, Prudential, um, you got your local boutiques, um, I would I would put Compass for there for sure. Um, I, I know I'm missing Century Twenty One, etc. And then you know all of your local uh, corporate dependent models. And and I would put this as a dependent contract uh, uh, in the dependent um, quadrant. Then what happened in the 1980s? So this was the model, right? And they did some marketing staff and supporters. And then in the 1980s, um, there was a company based out of Denver, Colorado. Um, Remax came along, and this is my um, de deflated balloon, my bad balloon, and this attracted a lot of the top producers at the time because they said, hey, come work for us, and we'll give you 100% commissions, and what happens is you just pay us a desk fee per month, um, and I almost look at this as a landlord-tenant uh, type relationship and go sell real estate. Good luck. So at the time, a lot of the top producers navigated towards here because that was the, the model of choice and they could kind of do their own thing and, and move forward. Um, so I would look at this as kind of the independent uh, model. A lot of, you know, Aaron Kaufman taught me this, and I think he may have gotten this from Gary. It's hard to get, a lot of times have people have to go from dependent to independent before they can go to interdependent, which we'll talk about now. So what happened was in 19, I think this is really important to share the history and the culture of the why Gary Keller created this company. In 1983, Gary Keller founded Keller Williams in Austin, Texas with Joe Williams. And 
At the time, he was working for a very local boutique dependent model. And uh, long story short, kind of more or less got in, in a disagreement with the way the company should be run or real estate should be operated. And in his belief um, was that the buyers and sellers don't give a flip about the company. They choose to do business with the agent, right? And NAR every single year validates that, verifies that through something like 80 something plus percent that they, it's the consumer that picks the agent, not the, the company brand. So in 1983, him and Joe Williams partnered up and says, what would it look like if we created a company and a model where we make our decisions and we put the agent as the brand and we stand behind the agents instead of in front of them? And so 1983 to 1987, Gary Keller and Joe Williams opened up Keller Williams in Austin, Texas. And then within four quick years, for a couple years, they became the number one franchise in Austin and um, in terms of agent count and then also in, in, in terms of production and market share. Um, and then the shift, we were in the middle of a shift too, and then in 1987, guess who came in? Remax. And what you need to understand is at the time, Keller Williams was not running a cap model. We were at old fashioned real estate splits. And uh, Remax came and took five of his top 10 agents and his staff overnight left. left. And, uh, I, you know, we, we couldn't hear say this. This is one of the best things, if not, that's ever happened in the history of the company. Because he asked the fundamental question. He goes, who do we have to become to, to, with his remaining agents in a room? And they whiteboarded it. What do we have to do? Who do we have to become to, to become a company where nobody would ever want to leave? What does that look like? And here's what they came with. And this was in 1987. Think about 33 years later, right? Where we are today and how these are still intact, in the fundamentals. One is, Gary, if you could keep a model where as we grow our business per annum, we have a cap, what we pay into it, and we get to keep 100% of our commissions. And at the time, that was, that's revolutionary because right there, right there, we become to a business owner mindset helping our agents because if you're gonna keep 100% of your income, you now have more money to do what? Turn around and brand who? The agent, right? So then that's who the buyers and sellers choose to pick with. And then also you have more income or more profit to turn around and hire what? Leverage, your first admin. And now you, you're doing more with less and building a business through people and you're truly becoming a business owner. So right there we have this concept of, of moving over here. Second, they said, um, what it would look like, Gary, would you be willing to share roughly 50% of your profits back to us because if we can help you grow the company. And it was a big aha because he realized he could grow the company with the right people um, through people and reward them by, by sharing profit. And I think most of you know, the last couple of years, we've been sharing close to 160, 70, $180 million per year now. And profit sharing now, we're well over $1 billion in the history of the company. We'll get to that in a minute. So that was a game changer. Third thing is if we're gonna share profits, we gotta have um, integrity. Let's open the books and the financials. We're gonna be an open book, transparent real estate company because now you're a partner in the business. And then the fourth thing is we're gonna make our decisions because we're a company of integrity, we share profits, we're transparent through our top producers in each local franchise through our agent leadership council and an ALC is more or less kind of to, to, to make decisions with the, the agents and the management as a whole. Reinvented the company and Keller Williams started to explode opening up in you know, Houston, Austin, more offices in Austin, Dallas, Oklahoma, we get business with Mo Anderson, regions are starting to develop, and Keller Williams goes on on this amazing growth plat uh, platform. But what I haven't even mentioned yet, which is the core foundation of our model right now, it, besides it, it, technologies, right, right, and then also training and education. And then Keller Williams University opened, and we started um, books and classes and training based on best practices and systems and models, right? And then he, later he wrote a book, it was read, and I would, I would argue that all of our training is focused on three things. We believe that Keller Williams, our agents, are in the lead generation business. And within those leads, we focus heavily on what? Listings. Because we believe that if an agent works hard to get listings, we're gonna promote the agent, their cell phone, their brand, and they get more business, and that gives them the leverage um, the third L, leverage, to go hire great talent to take your business to the next level. So Keller Williams and the shift came out in the book and um, 
and it just started to have this new, new, new wave of growth. Uh, and Keller Williams started to really, really explode. And then I'll come back to technology in, in here in a second. Then what happens is these agents are taught how to think like a business, be a business, act like a business, have more income through other people, through systems and models and, and worldwide training, and it frees them up to have more income and to have more opportunity where your money works for money. Up here, you got people, systems, and models. And down here, you got your money worth of money. And, and in my opinion, the biggest form of investment is zero risk, zero liability, and zero management responsibility. And that's through a profit share. Um, now, obviously, investing in market centers could be an opportunity, businesses, um, so many, I mean, that's right, whole other concept. But the way I look at profit share is, let me ask you a question. Mr. Candidate, who's your favorite, what's your favorite sport of all time? So they say football. Great. Um, so who's your favorite athlete? Um, or what's your favorite team? Dallas Cowboys, okay? So who's your favorite athlete in the history of the Cowboys? And they go, Troy Aikman. Awesome. So did Troy Aikman make more money when he was playing quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys in, in, in salaries? Or did he make more money in, in endorsements? Endorsements. Great, so how long has it been since Troy Aikman's played for the Cowboys? 22 years, 20 plus years. Awesome. Does Troy Aikman still make significant amount of um, endorsement money today? Absolutely. Where's your endorsement money? See, I view you as the Troy Aikman of your real estate company. And my ask you, if your, today was your last listing appointment, your last closing, your last contract buyer, what specifically has you broker done to help you be the 5% who earns 95% of the wealth in the world. Would something like this ex excite you, right? What specifically has a question have they asked is where do they see yourself in five years? What would, what would excite you? What specifically is your natural behavioral style, right? Your motivation. Um, what what would, would it be expansion? Would it be the indie? Would it be a team leader? Would it be a productivity coach? Would it be worldwide? Would it be a technology director? Um, would it be an investor in a market center? Would it be whatever that may look like? What would what would drive you to 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 specifically help you be the five percent of the ninety five? Because let's make it real clear: there, there's two types of models out there. There's there's broker focused, combined with publicly traded, right? broker focused publicly traded models versus a privately held agent driven wealth building opportunity where business is being a business owner at your local level is the core and culturally that's sound with the local partnership and the management and the investor group and in turn help you build this massive career help you find out what you want and invest have money work for money where you could be the five percent of the 95. So my question to you is where are you today? Where does your broker want you to be today? And what specifically would excite you over here? Now, the other piece I would add here too is, and you know, you, you go through the, the questions is too, is it is technology. And there's two tech platforms I believe as well. There's the agent enabled tech and there's the tech enabled agent. And here's the difference over here, the the agent enabled tech, here's the issue with these types of models. And good company, nothing right or wrong, but if you don't own the tech, if you don't own the data, and you don't have, have the artificial intelligence and being privately held, you can't make fast decisions in real time. So in an agent enabled tech model in the ENS quadrant, you have two options. One, you either have to buy your tech, right? And that's the challenge with that is you can't move and adapt in real time. You don't own the data and the artificial intelligence. Um, or two, you could start today. And my challenge to that would be catch us if you can. While well, we're 40 years, five years ahead and Facebook and Google is partnering and having this conversation with the executive team with Keller Williams and integration. And you're four to five years behind of a company with 160,000 agents, the number one franchise in the United States, agent count and volume. And um, yeah. We've got that game, right? And then over here is, I kind of look at it, Zach Younger's helping me a lot with this, is thinking of it as your iPhone. iPhone. And how simple it is easy when you have a platform and artificial intelligence talking to each other and directly going to the consumer 
but you're the control of the transaction. You're the fiduciary, right? So Mr. and Mr. Candidate, if this interests you, any part of this over here, the building a, a business through systems and models and being a partner in passive income through technology, models, systems, and whatever would really drive you based on your natural behavior, right? And your motivation, I would love to take this next step in the conversation. And then to me, Keller Williams, that would be go through the KPA, it would be either tech audit, 30, 30, 40 model, agent, like all of those, right? But get specifically what would excite them and have them think a little bit differently what their life could be like over here. So I hope this helps. Good luck. This is my business consultation and get them to see it. And by the way, sometimes people go, I'm okay over here. And my response is awesome. Who do you know that would be excited to be over here? Because I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to the right people, enough of the right talent versus changing people the way they're ingrained or the way they think. Let's just go talk with enough talent and they're out there. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.